Hey guys, uh, welcome back to part two of my Q&A video series um, that I'm doing here. Once again, wanted to thank you all for really awesome questions. Uh, you guys rock. Um, so we're just going to jump right in, starting off with uh, the 13th Wolfman. He has uh, three questions here. The first one being, what is your favorite piece of clothing to lounge in? Um, give me a hoodie and I'm set. Uh, I think they're just so comfy, especially like a really big oversized hoodie they're the best um favorite horror film director I'm gonna say Neil Marshall because he directed Dog Soldiers uh, Wes Craven for the Scream movies and I know I'm leaving somebody out I know I'm leaving somebody out oh um Sam Raimi so those would probably be my three and uh, I know there are probably more but I, I haven't really gotten big into the horror genre yet so I know the big popular ones like George A. Romero and, um, oh my goodness, my mind just went blank, uh, but please forgive me, I know, I know you yourself are a big horror fan, so please forgive me for my ignorance and horror and lack of horror knowledge, <laughs> but I'm gonna go with Neil Marshall, Wes Craven, and Sam Raimi. Um, when not watching films, what else do you do in your spare time? Um, Loved a horseback ride. That's probably my favorite thing ever. Um, I love to read. I love to... Um, I do graphic design in my spare time. Uh, I use... Uh, usually sh my m movies and TV shows are kind of my inspiration. I post a lot of it on Tumblr. Um, I love to read and I do archery. Uh, I'm looking for a new bow right now. So I haven't been really able to do it as much as I like. Um, but once I find one, I hope to get back into it. Thank you so much for the questions. Ryan1998, Justin. Um, awesome guy. Been one of the first people I followed when I joined. Um, he's got four questions. Since being on YouTube for years, what has been the best and least favorite thing about YouTube for you? The best thing is definitely all the different people I've met from all over the world. Uh, it's just so much fun to interact with all you guys and hear your opinions and uh, and just experience and learn about new films that I would have never heard of without you know joining YouTube um, my least favorite thing uh, would probably be when you know people who you know you love their videos and you always look forward to their updates um, when they leave and even when friends leave um, it just kind of sucks but life sometimes gets in the way and of course you know with any large group of people will come a little bit of drama um, so yeah it's not really been too big of a problem for me here on YouTube but I know it's been for others but there you go uh, what are some of your favorite horror films and what do you look for for watching or for what do you look for when watching a horror movie some of my favorite horror films are, of course, Dog Soldiers. I like the Scream films. I like the Evil Dead films. Although, if you've noticed closely, I don't yet own those. I've still, I'm still deciding which ones I want to get, or if I want to see if they're going to release any kind of um, Blu-ray special editions just yet. Um, let's see. Case 39 was one I really liked. Uh... I'll add some annotations if I think, I, I always think of more after I finish these videos, so I'll put in some annotations if I come up with any more. Um, and what do you look for when watching a horror movie? I definitely look for, um, you know, smart characters, intelligent characters, um, my number one. Uh, just when I'm watching a horror film and there's things that, I mean, things that characters do that you really don't think somebody would do in real life. It just bugs me and it takes me out of the movie and of course you're gonna get yourself killed doing that but um, I look for I like you know a bit of creepiness with my horror films. I don't just go for the jump scares or the gore. I like some genuine creepiness and um, that's what really what sticks with me after I watch a good horror film and I'll give you an example of a scene. It's not from a horror film but it freaked me out so bad. Um, it was a scene in the basement from Zodiac where um, Jake Gyllenhaal, who's playing Robert Graysmith, uh, reporting on the Zodiac. He's trying to figure it out who he is and he goes to this, uh, the guy who he suspects um, 
or somebody who who thinks has information on on the Zodiac Killer. He goes to his house and he goes down in the basement and it is the creepiest scene. I mean, and that leads me to another thing I really um, look for, atmosphere. Um, a really good atmosphere will set the tone for the movie uh, and just make it all the more scarier and creepier and uh, really, I like a really good atmosphere. And I just thought of another one because I knew that would happen. Uh, the Others is another one of my favorite horror films. And a reason I thought of it was because of the atmosphere. That movie has one of the best atmospheres of it. I mean, it really it really is kind of part of the movie. Um, just the, the house, the all the dense fog. It just, it, without it, the movie would definitely not work as well. Okay, um, since summer is upon us, what summer movies are you looking forward to? Probably my biggest one right now is Iron Man 3. I can't really think of really any movies this summer. I know there's... I know there are some that are coming out this summer, but I'm really focused on Iron Man 3 right now. I'm so excited. Name one word that describes your YouTube channel. This was a tough one, so good job with that, Ryan. One word that describes my YouTube channel, um, I'm going to say, mm, I'm going to say variety, and the reason I say that word is because I don't just stick to films in general, I do TV, I do books, um, and I know a lot of other people do that as well, so I know it really, I really can't think of a word to describe my channel. But I'm going to stick with variety. This is a really hard question, Justin. Um, but thanks. Uh, and uh, speaking of variety, I do hope to incorporate not just updates, but I do want to do more reviews. I want to get better at that. I've said that a couple times. And I want to incorporate book reviews because I like to read. And I know you, a lot of you guys do too, so that would be kind of fun. Just branch out a little bit. Alright, Fergmaster. Ferg. Another guy I've been to subscribe to for a long time because his TV collection is out of this world, so I always look at his collection when I want to start a new show. Um, Alright, first question. If you could live in any TV show or movie, what would it be? Um, hmm, probably... I'm going to just stick with TV shows here because there are way too many movies to choose from to do that. So, if I had to choose right now a, a TV show to live in, just based on, the, I'm just basing it on the environment and the world, not the characters, um, I would probably have to go with Once Upon a Time just because you get to go back and forth between fairy tale land, like a enchanted mystical place with magic, and the modern world, so you get best of both worlds. So that would be kind of cool. Although I would hope I would be a fairy tale character, because that's the only way you could kind of experience both. So that's what I'm gonna go with because if I can pick in any any kind of world to live in, I wouldn't want to pick a show that takes place kind of in our world because I already live here. And I was thinking, I'm just trying to give you my train of thought here. Game of Thrones, everybody pretty much just dies, so that that doesn't sound too fun. Um, another one though would be Legend of the Seeker. That I, if you can't tell, there's a theme going on here, and I'm talking with my hands. But um, I think it'd be fun to kind of live in like a fantasy world for a little bit, even though I'd miss my electricity and plumbing and cars, but just something different. I know that was a much longer answer than was probably needed, but I'm going to go with uh, the world of Once Upon a Time. What movie are you looking most looking forward to in 2014? I have not really looked at what movies are coming out in 2014, so I'll have to get back to you with an annotation for that one. Favorite TV show on the air right now? I have a lot of favorites that I watch that I keep up with, but I'm going to give you my top three. The three that, um, you know, I have to see right away. There is no waiting. And they're going to be Once Upon a Time, Castle, and Game of Thrones. 
although I do love, there are tons of other shows that I love and am currently watching, but those are, I guess if I had to pick, I'll pick those. Alright, Ferg, what are you trying to say with this fourth question? Uh, he asked, when was the last time you took a shower? What are you trying to say, ma'am? What are you trying to say? Um, last time I took a shower was this morning before I went to work. So there you go. Alright, moving on. Next question comes from uh, Doors8077. First question, do, I, do you play video games? Yes, I play video games. I'm not a huge gamer, but I've always enjoyed them. I started off with Sega. Um, I had the, my sister had the Super Nintendo, I had a Game Boy Color, um, N64, PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, I have a PlayStation 3 right now, that's my current console, I had a GameCube, um, I have the DS, I have the PSP, so, yeah, I'm a little bit, I do enjoy video games, I just don't have as much time to play them as I would like, and I'm currently very excited for the PlayStation 4. Um, did you like your high school years? I did. Um, there are certain aspects of them that I liked better than others, but overall I did not hate high school. It was not a big deal for me. Um, I'm one of the weird people that actually liked school. I liked the learning part. I liked going to school. Um, I don't know. I just... I didn't mind it. I liked it. Have you seen the TV show The Wire? No, but it is on my very long list of shows that I need to watch. So, thank you very much for those questions. Alright, uh, next up, we have some questions from Kevin, another uh, person I've been uh, subscribed to for a long time. Um, I love his channel, so go check it out. Um, Dr. Hasline, and oh my gosh, I feel bad if I pronounce that wrong. <laughs> I just, I know him by Kevin. Um, first question, being that you're on Twitter, Tumblr, and of course YouTube, how do you like the social media experience, and would you recommend that others embrace it? Um, I personally love it, and the reason I love it is because it puts me in touch with people who like the same things I do. I do not have, like, a ton of people that I know in real life um, that, in, that enjoy movies and television to the degree that I do, um, to the degree that they want to discuss it and analyze it and talk about it and just... Um, and obviously collect it. So, social media really um, connects me to everyone, to everyone who, you know, shares my interest. And I think that's a really awesome thing about social media. No matter what, you can always find somebody who shares the same interests as you do. Um, and the second part of that is, would you recommend that others embrace it? It really, I don't know, it depends because obviously it's the internet and not everyone is super nice. So, especially, um, sometimes people speak their opinion and they get a lot of backlash for it. So that's something you gotta take into consideration. But overall, I mean, it's definitely worth, um, checking out, especially if you're looking to meet new people, um, and want to discuss... You know whatever you're interested in again I keep harking back to that but that is what motivated me the most to join all of these sites so yes I um, I really like it um have you ever really been a have you ever been really offended by a film I don't think so I think if I had been it would have stuck with me and I just can't remember any time that I have been but I really want to know if you have just cuz yeah, I really want to know if you have as well, if you want to answer me in a comment. I know if you do a Q&A video, I might ask you the same thing, just because I'm curious what film it was and all that. Um, what is your et ethnic background? Do you know if any family members who are originally from other countries? I'm Irish, a little bit of, uh, I have a little bit of uh, Cherokee Indian, and I think so along the way, uh, some English, I believe, and there was one other one, but I can't remember. But I mostly, if you can't tell, got the Irish. And if you see my sister, she has dark hair and like tans right, right when she, like immediately when she walks into the sun. It is not fair. So she definitely um, has more of the, like the American Indian and the English, I guess you could say. Um, so yeah, uh, and I, 
it's been a ways on down the line. Uh, family members I know uh, who came over from Ireland, and then I'm sure the English ones they came over way back in the 1600s. And I really want to do some genealogy research. Re bleh, research. I think that would be a lot of fun. But I had a friend who did it and said it was very, very, very time consuming. But it looks like a lot of fun. So thank you so much, Kevin, for those awesome questions. Next up, we have EJ um, Puckbond 007, um, and yet another awesome YouTuber that I recommend you subscribe to. Okay, he has three questions. Uh, what is your favorite James Bond film? I'd probably have to say Skyfall, and I say that because I really haven't seen that many of them. I've just mainly seen uh, the Daniel Craig uh, Bond films and the Pierce Brosnan ones. I haven't really gone much farther back, I know. I'm, I might buy the 50th anniversary set eventually and watch them all, but right now I'm going to say Skyfall. Top three films of 2012. Ooh, this is a hard one. Hard one, hard one. I'm going to have to say, and I know I'm going to change my mind, but I'm going to have to say right now, Django. Um, I always forget the ones that come out in like between January and April during the year. I always forget what had come out. So, um, so these might all kind of lean towards the later half of the year. But I'm going to say Django, The Perks of Being a Wallflower. And I'm I'm trying to and I'm gonna uh, I can't decide between the Dark Knight Rises of the Avengers. I'm gonna just tie with those because I can't decide. So Django, the Perks of Being a Wallflower, and the Avengers and the Dark Knight are tied. And I know I know I'll probably <laughs> go back and rearrange and change, but for right now, as of this video, that's gonna be my answer. And uh, if you guys haven't discovered already, I'm really indecisive. So I can't do lists. I've tried. Can't do it. Alright, top three films of the 80s. I'm going to go with The Breakfast Club being number one. Heathers. And, 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 Beaches. There we go. I know I had to think. Um, but Breakfast Club, Heathers, and Beaches. Even though Beaches made me cry so much. I, I can count on one hand how many times, how, or how many movies have made me actually cry, and that was one of them, but it was still a very good movie. Uh, so thanks EJ, thanks for the question. Um, Lindsay, uh, 2057, another YouTuber I've been subscribed to for quite a while, so go check out her channel, and Lindsay, I look forward to seeing more of your videos if you have the time to make them. Alright, um, which Disney Blu-ray do you think the, has the best picture quality? Um, right now as it stands, the ones that I own. And I'm going to just stick with Disney and not try to throw Pixar in there. I know they're yeah, a little bit intertwined, but I'm just going to stick with Disney. Either a tie between The Lion King and I think just for the age of the film, I think Snow White has a beautiful picture. And... I mean, they all, Disney does such a good job, and they're, I mean, they're amazing transfers. Um, so Lion King, Snow White, and again, Sleeping Beauty, all in the older films really, really do um, benefit a lot from the Blu-ray transfer, and I, I think they look amazing. So, and I keep going off, but Lion King, Snow White, um... And I'm going to just say Beauty and the Beast just because of how gorgeous that ballroom scene looks on Blu-ray. It's amazing. It's so pretty. Um, besides watching films, what other hobbies do you have? Uh, I, I did already answer this, but I will throw my answers back up again. Horseback riding. I like to read. I like to do um, graphic design. I like to play around in Photoshop. Um, I like to do archery. And... Um, it's really kind of kind of what I do in my spare time. Alright, uh, next one. Do you like working at Target? And would you suggest to somebody like me looking for a job? I like it. I really like the people I work with over anything else. I have a really great, awesome group of people that I work with. And uh, my managers are fantastic. Um, 
Uh, Target is definitely a very uh, customer-oriented corporation, store, business, whatever. And uh, you have to be really kind of good with interacting with the public as you would be with any kind of retail job or anything where you're selling stuff to the public. So if you're good at that, uh, awesome. If you don't like it so much, maybe not for you. Um, I'm not crazy about just because... There are, you run into people who you just shake your head at and wonder how in the world they made it this far in their life. Um, but, um, they, we do, like, obviously during the holidays, it gets a little crazy. Target, for the last week going up to Christmas, we were open until midnight, and those, I look back, and that was, oh, those are such long nights. Um, but as, as for the job itself, I work back in the electronics department. It's really not that hard, to be honest. Um, I guess depending on what part of the store. If you're just on the sales floor, it's really not hard. Anything to do. Pretty much what I do when I'm not in electronics and just on the sales floor. And I mostly close. And we, we do what we call reshop and zoning. Reshop is just getting the stuff in the front and putting it back. And zoning is just going through the shelves and making them, pulling everything forward, make it look neat. That's pretty much the gist of the job. Now as far as guest services and all that. I don't do that, so I could not do that. <laughs> but um, it's very easy. I'm just trying to give you kind of a little more details about the job to see. But yeah, like I said, not a hard job. Can get a little stressful at times, like any job, especially during the holidays. But yeah, not bad. Um, besides the Twilight series, what other movies and TV shows do you consider uh, guilty pleasures? Oh my goodness. Uh, as far as movies go, um, I don't really feel guilty per se for earning them, but most people would kind of raise their eyebrows at them. And probably the two movies that I consider guiltiest pleasures would be um, Crossroads, the uh, Britney Spears movie. I didn't think it was that bad. I saw it in theaters and I really liked it. And that's when I was a, like, um, when did it come out? I guess I was about 13 or 14, somewhere around there. And I still like it. And uh, Bring It On, just because, again, around the time it came out, I really loved that movie. And I still, again, I think it holds up pretty well. And I think it is better than a lot of the teen comedies that come out today. But that's just my opinion. And I do not feel guilty for owning them, but most people kind of raise their eyebrows. Um, TV shows, I guess, hmm, some of the, ch I guess, Beverly Hills 90210, it's a little cheesy. But I like it. I remember watching it a lot when I was a lot younger. Um, I guess Power Rangers would be kind of a little guilty pleasure. But again, childhood show, so what are you going to do? But like I said, I, I, um, guilty pleasures, I, I don't feel guilty. And I'm going to quote Brandon, the real sketch man on this one, and just kind of like what you like. Who cares what everybody else thinks? And I, or what everybody else thinks. I really like that attitude, so... I'm going to go with that. Um, I am really sorry for these long-winded answers, but, and there was a bug fly.